Hello and welcome to episode 19 of Daily Flip. This is actually a live edition for those of you watching on the Facebook page, the Car Flip Facebook page. Um, if you're watching there, you may be watching for the giveaway we are doing today. We'll be drawing a name in a moment from inside of here. I'm trying to let them fall out. Uh, but just to preface that, yesterday in episode 18, we announced that we were going to do a giveaway every single day this week, so today being Tuesday, we're gonna do that through Friday. So today through Friday, I guess Thursday, there's gonna be a $5 Amazon gift card given away, so we're about to do that in just a moment. If you would like to register for tomorrow's, we've already passed the cutoff for today, the cutoff is five o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Um, so if you wanna register for tomorrow's, you're gonna to need to go to the Facebook page, which if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link down below. If you're watching on the Facebook page, it's going to be very simple. You just go to the same page tomorrow and go to the episode above 18, so it'll be episode 19. You're going to get one entry for uh, for liking. You're going to get one entry for commenting. You're going to get three entries if you share, so you could have a total of five. And then at the end of the week, we're going to take all of these. We're going to save these entries inside of here. We're going to enter them in a probably something bigger, and we're going to have a drawing for a $25 Amazon gift card. So even if you don't win today, that doesn't mean you won't possibly win towards the end of the week on Friday when we do that drawing. But if you want to be entered separately, so these entries do not count for tomorrow's drawing. If you want to be entered for tomorrow's, make sure you like, comment, and share for the maximum number of entries. Um, so that is that tomorrow, episode 19, all the same stuff you did today, do tomorrow. Um, right now I'm going to draw to see who is going to win the Amazon gift card, again, it's only five bucks today, five tomorrow, five Thursday, we'll do a $25 on Friday. So I'm gonna draw a name and what'll happen is we'll need to get your email address so we can send you the Amazon gift card. Actually, we have this in a oil filter. This is a really fancy oil filter case. Normally they're just in a box. It's a cartridge oil filter, so um, real fancy. Might make this a pencil holder or something, I don't know. I'm gonna balance my oil filter. So we're gonna draw a name. See who wins the gift card, and then we'll get on with the rest of the episode. Our winner for today, let me open this up, is, I'm gonna put this down, Scott Delacay. So you can see if I'm saying your name correctly, let me put it on the Facebook camera down below, on the big camera up above, if that's gonna focus. Um, we will message you on Facebook, let you know that you want, get your email address so we can send you that Amazon gift card. So congrats, Scott DeLacy maybe, probably DeLacy. If I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry, Scott, but uh, you won five bucks today. And we're gonna throw this back in there so you have another chance for the Friday entry. This will be where they accumulate, we'll put them back in here. And that is that. So, on with the rest of today. Today has been a nasty, rainy day. We're actually not going to be moving around today because there's not much going on back in the shop right now. And it's nasty, cold, rainy outside, which is why I feel like I sound like the guy in my head. I sound like the guy from Every Everybody Loves Raymond, like the older brother with the really deep voice. In my head, that's what I feel like. That's what I sound like. Um, so if like snot just comes down, I'm sorry. Um, it's, anyway, I'm ready to go home and go to bed. But I wanted to do this daily flip. Today has been a lot of repair that we've been doing. We um, brought in a Mercury Mountaineer, it needed a battery. We're troubleshooting some ABS codes, which luckily we were able to fix um, with a wheel bearing, which had an assembly uh, wheel speed sensor built into it, the ABS sensor. Uh, so that took care of that. Um, also, we took care of a Jaguar. We had some tires we had to have put on, so we went to a tire shop to buy some used tires. When we got there, we didn't realize, and I, I didn't pay attention, uh, the wheels had locks on them, so we had to come back, take those off, because we didn't have the lock um, key, so we had to take those off, put other lug nuts on there. I'm gonna take that tomorrow for two used tires. Um, just as a comparison for some folks that don't know, a used tire should cost anywhere from $25, $30, $35. There are places that charge more, but uh, 25 30 is what I like to pay, so that's what we're going to be paying for these tires tomorrow. Um, once we do that, this Jaguar needs driven. Um, we're getting an intermittent transmission code, which has been a headache, so um, the more driving, the more miles we can get on it, maybe we can get past that. Uh, but with these tires, they're showing metal, so uh, they could blow any minute, unfortunately. So we took care of that, and I'm just looking outside, seeing the cars that we took care of. My sister in law is in town right now, she needed front brakes and an oil change, we took care of that for her. We uh, put new front brake pads as well as rotors. So there's a deal 
for commercial accounts right now at Pet Boys. Actually, I have a Pet Boys receipt. Um, I've had some questions recently about um, not necessarily flipping, but if you have um, the ability to do auto repair, how do you price that? So I'll get get into that in a moment. But this is a receipt from Pet Boys a moment ago. This is for a Chevy Cruze, another job that I'll speak about in a minute. Uh, but this is one we're going to do front brake pads on. So I was able to purchase for the Chevy Cruze uh, front brake pads and rotors for fifty nine. I'm sorry, sixty nine ninety nine. But it actually calls for a, I believe, a ceramic pad standard, so it was a little more. For this uh, 2010 Honda Accord of my sister-in-law's, it did not call for the ceramic, so we were able to get those for $59.99. That includes front brake pads and rotors, so you really can't beat the price on that. Um, otherwise, we are currently working on a Jeep Wrangler. We've actually uh, had in some of the other videos, some of the daily flips. It's a 2005 Wrangler. We've got a set check engine light that will not go away for the oxygen sensor heaters. I think it's bank one and I'm forgetting which one it is. Either way, we're troubleshooting that right now. There are some wiring issues potentially as well as the exhaust is not ideal. There could be a leak in the exhaust manifold. Uh, the muffler that someone's put up there just sounds horrible. So we potentially could be looking at a new exhaust manifold coming down with a new exhaust going out the back. So we just got to weigh our options there. We're really now just getting it in. We took care of the interior. So we did a bed liner, got the seats clean. I still have to stitch up a, a, the driver's seat. Um, but we got a really good profit margin that we're going to have on this one. It's just a matter of, it's a lot of little small things that are kind of giving us headaches along the way on that one. So really just getting that one in for the first time today. We put an oxygen sensor in it, which we bought on Amazon. If you are buying auto parts, we do some with Pet Boys in advance. We need something right now for like a customer job. But if we have the time, I like to order a part on Amazon if I can, because this oxygen sensor I think costs like $17.99 as opposed to 35 and some change at advanced auto parts. So I'll take that savings all day long. I can wait the two days because I didn't need it right then. And I'm seeing a comment. What's up, Joe? Hope you're doing well today, man. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, we have a phone below us with a Facebook live stream right now. So um, otherwise, I wanted to get into how to price jobs. And so if you get the reputation of buying and selling cars, if you're a flipper or maybe you have a small used car lot or you have the idea or the intention to start a used car dealership, people will ask you about automotive repairs. When I started my dealership here, people just naturally began to ask if I worked on cars, which I do a little. I'm not a master mechanic. I can get things done, but I do have a mechanic in the back that knows what he's doing. He can, you know, tackle any job no matter how big or small. So we began doing just from word of mouth automotive repairs. And we have a car right now I'm just going to go over with you. Um, it was a 2000 or it is a 2013 Chevrolet Cruze. It has a 1.4 liter supercharged, I believe it's their supercharged it's turbo. I can't remember if it's turbo or supercharged. Either way, it's it's one of those two. Um, and he came in, he was having a rough idle. He had a check engine light. His, he was getting a little bit of a vibration as he was braking. And I'm seeing another comment. What's up, Cla is it Claudio? I believe I'm saying that right. From Washington, DC. I hope the weather's a little better there right now. Um, it's probably about the same, cold and nasty. I um, hope you're doing well. Um, if you're not a member of the Facebook page or the Facebook group, we'll put a link below if you're on YouTube. We'd love to see you in some live videos there so we can interact. For any of you inside the Facebook page right now, if you have any questions, be more than glad to answer while I'm here live. But this car uh, had a check engine light, which had a, uh, a P171 or P0171, had a couple manufacturer specific codes. As we began to look, uh, we you know noticed that there was an intake leak that we could hear. Appreciate the kind words, Noah. Um, so we went through, we found out where the exhaust leak was coming, not the exhaust leak, the intake leak was coming from. It was actually on the top of the valve cover. Uh, there was a, there's a port there and we weren't sure exactly what it was to begin with, but it turned out it's a built-in PCV valve type assembly. Actually right there on top of the, uh, the valve cover. You can only replace it by replacing the actual valve cover on top of the engine. So we began to do a little bit of research on that in a system that we have called All Data. That basically is all of the dealership information as far as service and repair for most any vehicle on the road. It gives you labor times, it gives you labor procedures. Um, so we went through that and we determined that we definitely needed the valve cover. And from there, I went to Google. It's a great go, uh, great place to reference any type of automotive repairs that you might need to make. So as we referenced it, came across a really helpful article that uh, kind of gave us what the root cause of that problem potentially was. It pointed towards the intake manifold, the whole assembly. So if we didn't replace the intake manifold, we were gonna have that problem again on the actual valve cover. So then we went a little further, investigated. We did have a bad intake manifold. 
and I am, yep, you're definitely right, uh, Claudia, uh, system lean bank one. That can be a really big headache to deal with. Luckily, this one we were able to figure out. So we were only able to get these parts from the actual Chevrolet dealership. Um, and the way that they price that for a repair garage, there's our cost and then there's the customer cost. So I'm just going to give you some numbers. The valve cover, uh, our cost is, and I have this written down somewhere else. I have the customer's copy right now. We have sticky notes scattered all over my desk. But I'll just give you a rough idea. The uh, customer's cost is $75.41. If they go to Chevrolet, they're going to pay $75.41. My cost is like $59 and some change, so I get to make a little bit on the part there. Um, the intake manifold customer price, um, the retail price is $261.07. Um, my cost was like $190 something. Normally, the, uh, the dealer price or the, uh, I guess the garage price is about 75% of the actual retail price. It's close. So on that, I'm able to make the difference uh, marking up the parts. Uh, labor is calculated. A lot of folks you know, don't understand the way cars are priced, which is why we're going over this. When you have a system or a, you know, a website that's accessible to you like All Data, uh, Mitchell Pro Demand is another. You have to pay for these monthly. I think All Data is roughly $200 a month. So when you pay for that, you have access to the labor rate. So on this one, it told us that the labor rate for the valve cover was 1.6 hours. Now we're also going to be putting the gasket in. There's a couple other tweaks we have to make there. So we rounded that up to two hours. We bill $98 an hour. So the way you're going to do that, and we're getting a phone call if you're actually on the website on YouTube watching this, I'm ending that. That was my wife that was calling. For those of you on Facebook, sorry, my wife's calling. She's probably going to call back because she thinks I'm not answering my phone. We'll see how that goes. Um, but we bill out $98 an hour, so that's two times 98. Um, the intake manifold, and I didn't write the time down up here, it was like 2.4, I believe. Um, there are also some ancillary things that are going to go along with that that we're going to have to take care of. So we rounded that up to three. Um, so that built out at $245. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm giving you wrong numbers there because I didn't write these down. Um, whatever that time was, it's times $98. So the total labor for the valve cover is $196. The total labor for the intake manifold is $245. Plus parts, we also have brakes. We charge $125 to replace brake pads. Normally the brake pads cost less than $25. So there's a $100 profit margin right there. We're also doing rotors on this one. As I mentioned earlier, we paid $69.99 for the rotors, pads, everything. We're gonna be charging them $205 to replace those. If you do the math, 70 minus 205, that's our profit. And we're also doing an oil change. You actually don't make much, if anything, on oil change. If I actually calculated it out, I probably lose money doing oil changes for folks, but it brings in other business, so we do them. Um, so the grand total for him on this repair is gonna be $1,065.03. Um, if you subtract out my cost on the parts, and I'm just doing it off the top of my head, I have probably less than $300, $400, either way. We're gonna make five, six hundred dollars tomorrow. My mechanic can tackle this in one day. So for me, I'm paying him. I take out that expense, and I'm gonna be left with probably a, a good four, five hundred dollars profit when I don't have to do anything, and I can sub that out to my mechanic. So for those of you who are mechanically savvy, who can do repairs on your own, it can be a very profitable thing if folks have repairs and you can take care of them. But billing them out is where a lot of folks get lost. If they don't have a service like All Data or Mitchell Pro Demand, um, they could kind of get lost because you might accidentally price something too cheap, get stuck on a job, and end up losing money because your time is your most valuable asset. So that's how you would price an automotive repair job. Another question I wanted to answer really quick. I had someone ask me the other day how I met my mechanic, how they could actually hire a mechanic for their own. This episode's going a little bit long, so we'll try to wrap this up quickly. I actually met him by chance. I had a person that was test driving a car, wanted a mechanic to look at it. We went across the street. Rob, my mechanic, happened to be working that day, came out, was very nice, very helpful. Um, wasn't one of these mechanics that blew smoke, tried to prove how smart they were. Um, they actually said, you know, it doesn't feel like it has, I don't think it has enough power. And he looked at him, he was like, uh, sir, it's a Ford Taurus. It's not supposed to have a lot of power. So he was honest. He let him know that for the year making model, it sounded like, it you know, felt like a good car. They bought the car. The next day I went by to thank him for being honest. I think I took him a Mountain Dew or a Gatorade or something. And uh, he ended up doing a few side jobs for me. Ended up hiring him full time. Now he's here. Your best bet for finding a good mechanic to do work for you on your flips is to talk to people that you know. Ask around, do you know a good mechanic? Um, your 
best bang for the buck from a mechanic standpoint is someone that can do work on the side. So maybe they run their own business, maybe they work at Ford, but they take in customers on the side on the weekends. If you can find someone that's not going to have to charge you that $98 like I'm charging, maybe they could charge you $50 an hour or you know have a mechanic that does side work for me that charges me you know closer to 30. That's not my mechanic here in the house, but or here in house. Um, sometimes we have too many repairs, we have to sub them out. I have one that charges me $30, $35 an hour. That's on the labor rate book time. For me, that makes sense sometimes because it's just, you know, I need to make the sale. I don't want to sit around. So we do that. But that's your best bet for finding a good mechanic is to ask around, ask people that you know. Don't, you know, you might get lucky, but don't go to Craigslist. You'll find some random guy that you don't know. Leave your car with him and hope for the best. I did that once with a painter. It was the worst paint job I've ever seen. I went back, his thumbprint was actually in the side of the car. We had touched it. It was just the worst job ever in a bad part of town. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was desperate. So um, I'm just going to read this comment from Laura, actually on the Facebook group. I've been searching my area for a mobile mechanic, but struggling with credibility. Um, unfortunately, I, I have a used car dealership. Used car dealers and mechanics don't have their best reputation because of used car dealers and mechanics that sometimes aren't honest. Um, that's why I'm able to do well on the mechanical side because people have come to trust us. They know when I tell them something's bad on the vehicle, they can trust that and we're not going to gouge them and tell them that things are broken when they're not. That is a struggle finding a dealer that's going to work with you or a mechanic that's going to work with you and actually be honest. It's nice when you don't have to second guess when someone says you need ball joints or when someone says you need a CV axle or when someone says you need an old pan gasket. Having a mechanic that you can trust that you know that they're not going to try to sell you something that you don't need is very, very valuable, especially for car flippers because our profit is tied up. It's, it's in what we pay, but it's also what we have to spend after the fact. Every penny and dollar that we spend after the purchase is money that comes out of our profit margin, so that profit margin could shrink the more that you have to put into it. So good luck, Laura. Hopefully you can find somebody. Ask around. Ask people that you know. Ask people that you work with. Um, hopefully somebody would have someone they could point you towards. And just the only thing you can do with a mechanic is try. So next time you have a repair, send it out to them and see how it goes. Hopefully um, you can find someone there. Otherwise, that's today's daily flip. If you want to be entered in tomorrow's $5 Amazon gift card drawing, which will then enter you into the end of the week's drawing for the $25 Amazon gift card, um, be sure to like this for one submission. Comment anything, you know, tell me that the pineapple's cool in the corner. I don't know, comment anything. Um, and that'll enter you again. And then if you share it, we're gonna enter you three times. We're gonna keep all of our stuff stored for the end of the week. So every entry will enter you again for the $25 gift card at the end. If you're on YouTube, we'd love for you to subscribe. If you're on Facebook, hopefully you've liked the page and we can continue to share hopefully this content that is valuable for you. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. For those of you on the live feed, have a great night. For those of you on YouTube, if you're watching today or three years from now, hope you're still doing well and we'll see you in the next daily flip.